join kids hat family tia we were electing for the sports president today and i voted for myself because i think i am the tallest of them all oh that's great but don't you think you need more qualities to be the sports president than just being tall hmm like what like being smart i think you're right this reminds me of a story would you like to hear it i would love to rory the quick witted rabbit once upon a time in a far off land There lived a clever little rabbit named Rory. Rory was a curious little rabbit and loved to explore the forest every day. One day, while hopping around, he came across a group of animals that had gathered around a tree. "Good morning, Rory." "Hello, butterfly. What's going on over there?" "They're having a meeting to decide who should be their king." "Oh, wow." I want to join in. Rory hopped over the tree and joined the group of animals. He was very excited to be a part of the meeting. I should be the king. I am the strongest. No, I should be the king because I am the biggest. Ah, oh, excuse me. I should be the king because I am so majestic and beautiful. But among all the animals, Rory had a different idea. I think the wisest animal should be our king. I can prove that I am the wisest. Oh, you funny little rabbit. Why should you be the king? I may not be big or strong, but I have a lot of clever ideas. And I think a king needs to be clever and wise, not just big and strong. The animals thought about this and agreed to have a contest. The animal with the best gift would be crowned as the king. Rory went home to think about what gift he could bring. He decided to make a special potion of herbs and berries that would make the animals feel happy and energized. The day of the contest arrived and one by one The animals came to the tree with their gifts. The lion brought a crown made of gold. The elephant brought a big pile of fruits, and the peacock brought a dazzling array of jewels. But when Rory came forward with his potion, the animals scoffed. "What is that? Funny little rabbit with a funny little bottle as a gift." Ha ha ha. It's a potion I made from herbs and berries that will make you feel happy and energized. That doesn't sound very impressive. Why don't you just try some? It won't cause you any harm, I promise. And one by one, the animals drank the potion. Sure enough, they started to feel happy and energized. They forgot all about the contest and started playing games and laughing together. As the animals were playing, Rory noticed a group of hunters approaching the forest. We need to hide. Act like you're sleeping. The hunters approached cautiously. When they saw the animals lying still on the ground, they assumed they were dead and left the forest. Oh poor animals, they are dead already. Let's go ahead. Wow, Rory, you saved us all. You're a true hero, Rory. Thank you, but I couldn't have done it without all of you. We make a great team. From that day forward, Rory was crowned the king of the forest. He ruled with wisdom and cleverness, always making sure to put the needs of the animals first. The forest was a happy and peaceful place under his rule. 
Years went by and Rory grew old. One day he called all the animals for a meeting. It's time for me to step down as king. I've had a long and happy reign, but now it's time for a new king to take my place. The animals were sad to see Rory go, but they knew he was right. They decided to hold a contest to find a new king. The animals came forward with their gifts, but none of them were as impressive as Rory's potion. The animals started to get worried until a little mouse named Millie stepped forward. I don't have a gift, but I do have a suggestion. Why don't we all work together to keep the forest safe and happy? The animals thought about this and agreed that Millie had the best idea. They decided to work together as a team and protect the forest and the animals with equal responsibility. I love this story, Tia. I love this one too, Tofu. The moral of the story is that wisdom and cleverness are just as important as strength and working together is the key to success. Yeah, did you see that? That car almost hit that pedestrian crossing the road. Yes, I did. It was a close call. But do you know what they say? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. What does that mean, Tia? It means it's always better to be safe and cautious rather than take unnecessary risks. Accidents can happen in the blink of an eye. and it's important to always be aware of our surroundings and make smart choices. Oh, I see. That makes sense. Yes, it does. Would you like to hear a story, Tofu? Sure. I'd love to. The Wise Lion. Well, once upon a time, in a far away forest, there was a fox who was always causing trouble and getting into mischief. One day, he came across a lion who was basking in the sun. Hey there, Mr. Lion. You look mighty fine and mighty relaxed. What's your secret? Oh, I just take my time and enjoy the simple pleasures in life. No need to rush or take unnecessary risks. Ha! You must be bored out of your mind. I like to live on the wild side, take chances and see what happens. That's all well and good, Mr. Fox, but sometimes those risks can have dangerous consequences. It's important to find a balance between adventure and caution. Hmm. I see what you mean. But it's still no fun if you're always being careful all the time. See. I can swing the branch of the tree. We can you? Ha. Good for you, Mr. Fox. It's important to have fun and let loose occasionally, but it's also important to know when to draw the line and be responsible. What if you fell off the branch and landed on me? I could have eaten you alive. Hmm. That's the point. Thanks for the lesson, Mr. Lion. You're welcome, Mr. Fox. And remember, always think before you act and consider the potential consequences of your actions. I will, Mr. Lion. Thanks for the wise words. Wow. That was a really good story, Tia. I understand what you mean now about being careful and thinking before we act. I'm glad, Tofu. It's important to always be aware of our surroundings and make smart choices. It can make all the difference in the world. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for the lesson, Tia. No problem, Tofu. That's what big sisters are for. Yeah, 
and you are the best big sister anyone could ask for. Oh, thank you, Tofu. You're the best little brother a sister could ask for too. Can we go play now? Of course, Tofu. Let's go have some fun. But remember to always be safe and mindful of our surroundings. I will, Tia. What are you observing, Tofu? Tia, hmm, I was wondering how the tiger got such beautiful stripes. Well, it is a creation of God, Tofu. But there is a famous folk tale about how the tiger got its stripes. Really? I would love to know the story, Tia. Very well then. The mighty tiger and his stripes. Once upon a time, in a lush green jungle, a beautiful tiger without stripes roamed around. One day, he saw a huge and a strong buffalo working for a man. Looking at this buffalo, the tiger wondered, what made him work for such a tiny creature? I wonder why this brawny big buffalo works for this tiny little creature. The tiger, curious as ever, decided to go ahead and ask the buffalo about the source of power of the creature he works for. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell me something? Go ahead. Ask me. I have been observing your master and I am curious about the source of his power. It is man's great wisdom. That makes me work for him. Hmm, wisdom it is. The curious tiger, although he had big sharp claws, an immense amount of strength and a beautiful golden coat, wanted to be the wisest and the strongest of all. And so, one fine day, when the man was watching out for his grazing sheep, the mighty tiger slyly walked up to the man and shook him. Excuse me, wise man. Whoa, please don't eat me. What do you want? Oh, don't be scared, my friend. I won't harm you if... If? If you give me your wisdom. You want wisdom, huh? Well, I am hungry, you know. If you can't give me your wisdom, I might eat you. Oh no, don't eat me. I can give you my wisdom. Give it to me fast. No, wait. I left it at home today. I must go and fetch it for you. Will you wait here for me? I will wait, but make sure to come back. Uh, well, I am afraid of leaving a hungry tiger here with my animals. Can I tie you to this tree? The mighty tiger thought for a while about the power he could gain with wisdom and then he nodded his head. Alright, tie me up. The clever man, using his wisdom, tightly tied up the tiger to a tree and left. Later, the man returned but with some dry straw in his arms. He wanted to teach him a lesson because he thought that the tiger was acting smart and would eat up his cattle while he was away. Here's your wisdom. Uh, what do you mean? This is wisdom. Ah, you tricked me. You wanted wisdom and now you have it. The tiger roared and struggled to get away from the shackles of the rope. He wiggled and swayed his paws and finally cut off from the rope. The tiger ran straight to the river nearby to wash off the burning sensation with some cool water. Ah! The pain! 
In time, the tiger's wounds healed, but his body bore black stripes where the ropes had bound him. For a few days, the tiger felt humiliated with his new look, but as the animals of the jungle praised him, he became more and more confident with each passing day. You seem to have taken away the title of the most beautiful creature from me. Look at you. You look so gorgeous. Oh mighty tiger, these stripes make you stand out among us all. You handsome tiger. Thank you friends. You all just helped me appreciate what I once thought was a flaw. I may have been tricked. But these stripes are a sign of my strength and wisdom. From then on, the tiger wore his stripes with pride and became known as the most powerful and wise animal in the jungle. What in the world are you trying to do? I am trying to pluck those juicy fruits from this tree. <laughs> but do you think you will be able to pluck them? They are so high. Oh, I wish I could fly and pluck those fruits. I so wish I had wings. To wish is not bad. But one should be conscious about the consequences. Come, I'll tell you a story. The Tortoise and the Eagle A young tortoise was lazing around the riverbank, looking at the birds flying in the sky. He stared at them and started thinking out aloud. I wish I could fly like those birds. Up high in the sky, and watch the beautiful sceneries and beauty of the world from top of the world. Oh, I so wish that. Nearby, an eagle was sitting on a stone, listening to what the tortoise was thinking out loud, and couldn't resist but ask. Why do you want to fly? You should be happy with what you are gifted with. I wish I could fly with no trouble of crawling on the ground. So say that you want to fly because you don't want to crawl, not because you wish to see the world from the sky. Anyway, what will I get in return for making you fly in the sky? I'll give you the riches of gold from the Red Sea. So the eagle grabbed the tortoise in its claws and soared up high in the sky, making him see all the beautiful sceneries of the world. Flying higher in the clouds and closer to the stars, it was indeed a mesmerizing moment for the tortoise. While the eagle was flying over the riverbank, the rest of the tortoise were basking in the sun. Suddenly, the tortoise flying high up in the sky said, I wish my friends could watch me flying so high in the sky. I am sure they would get jealous watching me. What? Why would you want your friends to get jealous of you? I want them to see that I can fly and they cannot. It's such a nice feeling. What an evil friend this tortoise is, thought the eagle. With this, the eagle dropped him on the ground and asked for his treasure. Now give me my reward. <laughs> there is no reward. 
I was just kidding about the gold, so that you could take me for a ride. And with this, the tortoise left. The eagle couldn't tolerate his insult and decided to teach him a lesson. So the next day, the eagle went to the tortoise and said, Hey, would you like to go for a sky ride again? Yes, sure, I would love to. The eagle once again picked him up and clenched him in his claws. The tortoise, while enjoying the ride, said to the eagle, Why did you bring me again for the ride, even though I dishonoured my promise of rewarding you? That's because, tortoise, you wish to make your friends jealous, but at my cost. And now I let you enjoy the free fall. The eagle let his claws loose and the tortoise went falling down. Screaming for help and flying no longer, he crashed on the ground with a thud. Thanks to his shell, he didn't get injured. Soon, his old friends surrounded him and said, Hey, our young friend, you wanted to see the world from high up in the sky. To dream big is not a sin, but to dream it at the cost of others is just not justifiable. I have learnt my lesson now. I should be thankful to God for what I am blessed with. It was my shell only that saved my life. I should be happy with what I have and also should not use others for my selfish reasons. I surely have learnt my lesson. Tia, now I know what you were trying to say. I learnt a lesson too. One should think about the consequences before one wishes for something. I should be happy with what I am blessed with. I should rather look for an alternative to pluck those fruits. Wait, I'll get a ladder. <laughs> Tofu, you learn things quite fast. How important is it to be clever? It is important to be clever, but one should use it only for good reason, not to hurt someone. Come, I'll tell you a story of a clever monkey and a crocodile who thought he was clever but was actually a big fool. The Clever Monkey Once upon a time, on a riverside, lived a monkey on a tree. The place was a paradise for him because just hopping on a stone, he used to reach a small island in the middle of the river, which was adorned by choicest and juiciest of fruits. In the vicinity of the island, there lived a crocodile couple and every day they used to drool at the monkey hopping in and out of the island. But the monkey was so clever that the crocodile couple never managed to lay their hands on the monkey. One day the female crocodile said, Dear husband, I have a plan to nab this monkey. Ah, none of our tricks have worked with this clever monkey. What brilliant idea do you have now? The female crocodile whispered in his ears and all he could do was laugh sheepishly. The next day, when the monkey was busy feasting on fruits on the island, the crocodile very silently went 
and sat on the stone. When the monkey was done with eating, he was about to hop on to the stone when suddenly he realized that the stone is looking bigger than usual. He understood that it was a crocodile waiting for him. He called out to the crocodile. Is that you Mr. Crocodile? No, no, it's not me. And the monkey thought how dumb could the crocodile get. So he thought for a second and called out to the crocodile. Oh, you surely caught me this time. I'll make your job easier now. Just open your mouth and I'll jump into it on my own. The foolish crocodile opened his wide mouth with his eyes shut and waited for the monkey to jump. The clever monkey who was watching the closed eye crocodile hopped on the head of the crocodile and crossed the river. <laughs> you couldn't fool me this time either. By clear and clever thinking, the monkey managed to trick the foolish crocodile. Ha 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 ha! The crocodile was indeed a fool who got tricked by the clever monkey. Ya yeah, Tofu! And the moral is that we must think before we do anything. Like that clever monkey and not like that foolish crocodile. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hut family. Subscribe here.